we're grabbing a beer at the Junction Craft Brewery, where a few decades ago, it would have been impossible to make beer in this building, and if you went down the street, you could have even been fined for drinking it. As breweries go, Junction Craft can compete with many you've likely been to around the city. Big screen TVs, modern finishes, and of course, great beer. But that wasn't always the case here. This was uh, a building called The Destructor. It was a City of Toronto garbage incinerator. You heard that right. This place was packed with trash. In the early 1930s, the area was home to animal stockyards and meat packing businesses. But as the city developed, the need to get rid of garbage did too. Public Works Commissioner R.C. Harris oversaw a few different destructors, and he was into adding artistic touches to city buildings. When this one opened in 1934, trucks would drive in the back, drop off the trash, and a big crane would dump it into hoppers for burning. Knocked down a while ago, the chimneys attached here were up to 200 feet tall. And this place was built to last, with heavy-duty flooring and a foot-thick ceiling. The building stopped being used for waste in the 80s, and in the years that followed, it quickly transformed into a different kind of place. The 90s, it was used for raves. Unofficially, it might have been to one. From a, on a school bus. Junction Craft CEO Stuart Weldon shows us some of the leftover graffiti from that time. The founders, when they went through the process of moving the brewery and tried to keep this as best they could. But in the past decade, a huge transformation has happened here. It was literally a derelict uh, abandoned building. Um, so again, the, de the developer, they started um, completely gutting it back to the walls. And so everything is new from the windows to the utilities to everything. Uh, and they kept just the, the the bones of what they could. In came Junction Craft Brewery. You might not think a former home for trash would be good for making drinks, however. We have, I think, 24, 25 plus foot ceilings, uh, some very large openings where garbage trucks <laughs> would have come and gone. So uh, for tanks and brewing uh, equipment, that makes for a, quite an easy uh, installation. Another irony is while the beers are made in volume here, down Keel Street at Dundas, just a few minutes away, prohibition in some form lasted in certain parts up until the end of the century. The history is fantastic, but it also kind of makes for a, a cool story when we think about having a beer of what it was uh, in, in its past life. That area referred to as the Junction, of course. Community is is our name. Uh, our brewery is named after our community. Sarah Rowland heads up marketing here. She says they've worked to try to give back to the City. We donate 5% uh, of the sales from our Caribou Lager and our IPA to local charities, and we donate, we give back 1% of all of our employee time to volunteer initiatives. Meanwhile, as the brewery expands to make a range of products for smaller companies, they say they want to make sure the history of this place is cherished well into the future. All those little stories are still very much a part of the space, and we've left those. Um, where, you know, so you've got that shell and that heritage that you can see. I'm sure there's some stories if the walls could talk from the years that it's, uh, that it's gone through. In Harwood, Nick Westall, City News.